Okay, case uh, four. Whoa, that was the wrong way. I apologize. Okay. Did someone say cylindroma? Yeah, that that looks like cylindroma right here, right? It's very blue and basaloid, and it's got those islands that are molding together like puzzle pieces, or like my former fellow Ed Fulton liked to say, like the spots on a giraffe. And I kind of like that. That's kind of fun. Um, you usually have prominent collagen type 4 basement membrane material, and it is wrapping around, making a thick layer around each of the individual nests, and also often forms these little globules or droplets of hyaline basement membrane material within the um, nests of cells. Um, and then you can see here the little sweat duct lumens. Those are little eccrine ducts with secretion in them. And we always classically teach there are two cell types in, in both cylindroma and its close relative spiradenoma. Sometimes that's easier to see, and sometimes it's harder to see. Like here, you can kind of appreciate there's these small dark cells and then the slightly larger, more medium color purple. Um, but I feel like that's kind of a more nuanced thing, and I don't find that terribly useful in practice. Um, over here, we have... Uh, maybe that's not the best area. Over here... These cells look like the cells of cylindroma, but instead of being those puzzle piece nests, we've got individual balls or nodules here in the subcutis or in the dermis in some cases. So what's this? A spiradenoma? Yeah, spiradenoma. So spiradenoma and cylindroma uh, can have overlapping features and often occur uh, together kind of as a hybrid tumor. I'm not entirely sure what's going on in this area here. It almost reminds me of like a follicular tumor, but I don't think that that makes perfect sense unless I've seen sometimes where patients have some syndromes like uh, Brooks-Spiegler syndrome, and there are variants of Brooks-Spiegler where patients, or I've seen patients that developed weird follicular tumors in addition to their spiradenomas and cylindromas. So, you know, uh, follicular and, um, and sweat gland neoplasms and sebaceous neoplasms may sometimes have common embryologic origins, and dermatopathologists have been fighting over all of that for years and years. But in any case, it doesn't surprise me to see tumors that have overlapping um, differentiation between hair follicle and sebaceous and sweat gland, because um, it happens. And here, this is another thing that you can see, particularly in spiradenomas, you can get really prominent edema in the background. This is actually dermis here, not sweat duct. This is background dermis with hyalinization around the vessels, and you're having so much edema that it strings out and stretches out the strands of the basaloid tumor cells. This can happen in spiradenomas, and uh, also you can see a prominent um, stromal edema in the background of other um, sweat gland tumors like poromas.